Hello everybody and welcome to this, my first of two videos on the Canon AV-1. The Canon AV-1 is an interchangeable lens SLR with a center-weighted averaging meter. What that means is that the meter takes information from the entire scene, but the center, I think 75% with Canon, which is about a space about like this, is the majority of the metering information and then the balance comes from the outside periphery about 25%. It has shutter speeds of two seconds up to one one thousandth of a second, but you don't actually get to control any of them except for your flash sync of 1 60th and bulb. The rest of them are automatically controlled by the camera. That's the only option. The viewfinder magnifies at about 87% meaning that what you see in the viewfinder is about 87% as large as it will be on the film. And the frame coverage is 92% vertically and 93% horizontally, which honestly, those are okay specs. It'll get the job done, but the image in here is going to be a little bit smaller, which makes it a little harder to focus. And also you're gonna lose a lot on the edges. So what that means is that if you get everything you want to get in the image inside of what you can see, you'll have a little bit of room to crop on the top, bottom, and sides after you get your, your film back and open it up on your computer or in the darkroom. The focusing screen on this camera is a fixed focusing screen, meaning it cannot be swapped out. And it is an interchangeable, um, is a non-interchangeable focusing screen with a split prism. And, um, uh, within a matte field. And then the flash sync on this camera is 1 60th of a second. This camera's target market was amateur photographers, and you can tell that because it has automatic exposure only. And what that means is that you adjust the aperture setting, and then the cam camera will pick the proper shutter speed. It also lacked many features that would be useful to um, advanced photographers such as shutter speed control, or um, exposure compensation in the form of a button. You can still do exposure compensation, wrong, wrong one, with this guy right here with the uh, ISO adjust, uh, with the ISO dial. You can do exposure compensation and I'll show you how to do that in the second video. These were made by Canon in Japan from 1979 until actually I couldn't find out when they went out of production. Uh, none of the sources that I, I use had that data. Uh, I'm, my guess is it was only in production for a handful of years, but I couldn't, I couldn't verify that. It was preceded by the AE-1, kind of, but it didn't replace the AE-1. Instead, the AV-1 um, arose out of the United States market because US people, US consumers who wanted to, to use a Canon camera wanted one that had automatic shutter speeds with your control with aperture control. They wanted the opposite of an AE-1. They wanted aperture priority, not shutter priority. So Canon said, fine, and made the AV-1. It was concurrent with the AE-1, AT-1, AE-1 program, F-1, F-1N, and probably also the um, AL-1. And it was followed by nothing directly uh, I don't know of any aperture only, ap aperture priority only T bodies, but that said, I, I don't know the T series very well. So now let's go over the camera's features. Here is the top of the camera. We'll start here technically on the front with the strap lugs. This is what you would connect your strap to right here. Here we have the ISO selection dial. It's marked ASA because back in the day, film. Uh, standards were set by the American Standards Association, which is why that stands for ASA. And also, by the way, why very many Americans refer to film speeds as ISO instead of ISO, because for decades it was ASA. And then the numbers on here are your film speeds. This button, black button right here, is the battery check. And if you look through your viewfinder and press this, if the meter needle hops up, then that means your, your battery is okay. This is the lock release for the ISO selection dial. That indicator tells you where the film plane is, which is useful if you're doing macro shots, although since you don't have to calculate your own shutter speeds with this camera because it does it for you, I'm honestly not sure why that's even there. Flash hot shoe, shutter mode selection dial for automatic, 
1 60th in flash, bulb mode, and your self timer with automatic shutter speed selection. Uh, self timer with flash right there rather, and self timer with automatic shutter speed selection. This is your self timer indicator light, shut, shutter release. Uh, this is your shutter lock, so that's unlocked and that's locked. Film advance lever, frame count window. On the front of the camera, we've got the model number, we've got the battery chamber, and if you push the button right there down, the battery chamber flips open and then you can swap out the battery. We have the lens mount right here. Inside the lens mount, we have the aperture control linkage, so when you take a picture, ah, dang it. When you take a picture, uh, if the, the, this little arm right there flicks over, one of these arms does, and then controls the aperture. Anyway, here we have the backlight compensation button right here. And what you would do with this is, let's say you're taking a picture and you're out at a, an outdoor cafe, you're under an awning, you're in the shade, but it's a bright sunny day behind you and you want to take picture, a picture of the person you're having coffee with. You push the backlight compensation button and that will overexpose slightly to allow the, the person who's in the center of the frame to be exposed properly and just allow the, the background to get blown out. That's what this does and that prevents you from being in that situation and finding that your photos all come back with the background in proper exposure and the person you're, you're hanging out with being super dark and unrecognizable. Here we have the lens mount index dot. On the back of the camera, we have the viewfinder and we have a groove around the viewfinder right here for accessories that go over the viewfinder. On the bottom, we can see that somebody has at some point bought this camera from Henry's, so you guys are welcome for the, for the free advertising. This is the motor drive coupling button right here. A power winder, con uh, the power winder mechanical covering uh, coupler right here is underneath that. Film release button, uh, Canon Japan, tripod bushing, and then these are the electrical contacts for the power winder. Inside the camera, we have the film cassette chamber. This is where the film goes when you load that. We'll see it in the second video. These silver rails here are film guide rails, and these, when we'll see the pressure plate in a second, uh, help to keep the film flat as it advances. These silver dots here on the top and bottom are, the, are also guide rails that keep the film from moving up and down as it travels. Shutter curtain, film tension sprocket, and the film tension sprocket helps to advance the film and it does and prevent it from from moving backwards until you push the film rewind button and then it spins freely film take up spool right here we have a film guide roller this bit when the back closes goes right about here to help keep tension on the film as it goes over the sprocket so that it it doesn't skip any of the sprocket teeth film pressure plate, which gets sandwiched over the shutter, and cassette retention spring. So some notes on the Canon AV-1. AV has an actual meaning. It stands for aperture value, which is the mode that this camera shoots in, aperture priority. It uses the value of the aperture that you select here to determine the shutter speed. So the only thing you need to worry about if you're in auto mode on your dial is what aperture you're going to use for your photo. Uh, FDN lenses, which are these type right here with the black mounting ring and the silver button that you rotate the whole lens to take on and off. These were released concurrently with the AV-1. I, I don't think they were designed for it, honestly. I think this was a natural evolution within the FD lineage of lenses, but the release date was concurrent with the AV-1 camera. All of the AE-1 accessories will fit into the AV-1. So if you have an AE-1 eye cup or something like that, it'll work in here. If you have an AE-1 data back, it'll fit on the AV-1. Should anyway. I think this film back's removable. Ooh, it is not. So the film back accessories for the AE-1 will not fit on the AV-1. I mean, I guess you could if you took the base plate off here, bent that slightly, popped it out, put the film back in. Rebent it, rebent it, then put the film, the data back in. That could work. It would just be a bit of a hassle, but it's it's theoretically possible. The two second shutter speed on this camera is a hard cap, and 
the camera cannot be tricked into going longer. So that means that if your meter reading says one second and you put an ND filter on here because you really want to get a nice waterfall, um, you know, blurred water shot, you cannot make this go longer than two seconds. So don't try to put ND filters or polarizers on or whatever to make it go out to eight seconds. It won't, it's still gonna stop at two. This does have a stepless shutter speed, which means that from anywhere from two seconds up to one one thousandth, uh, it will do any shutter speed. So if the proper shutter speed for an exposure is one seven hundred and fifty third and a fifth, it'll do that. If it's a, an, an actual complete one two hundred and fiftieth of a second, it'll do that too. So that gives you very accurate exposures from this camera. And the other thing is, this is capable of taking photos with exceptional technical accuracy. Canon really did a good job when they designed the function of this camera, so it's really a well thought out uh, piece of equipment. Some things not to do with your camera. Uh, when you have the film back open, you do not want to touch the shutter. Uh, I know it looks like a lot of fun to let it open, stick your finger in and have it close on your finger. It's a terrible idea. It's a great way to ruin it, your camera. When you have the lens off of your camera, you do not want to touch the mirror because the oils on your finger can tarnish the mirror. That can worsen your focusing ability and it can also make the viewfinder dimmer. Don't leave your camera or lenses in your car. And that's because if your car gets really hot in the summer, the oils in the camera and the lens will get thin and then they'll run to places they shouldn't be. When they get back to normal temperature, then they get back to the proper viscosity and they mess with the camera's operation, especially in the lens if the oil gets onto the aperture. Also, if your, car, your camera's in your car and it gets really cold in the winter, the oils in the camera and lens can get, can get solid and then they start to break down. And that means they get really gummy and they don't work properly, even if they're in the spots they're supposed to. And lastly, if you leave your camera in your car, that's a really good way to come back to your car with no camera and a broken window. So really strongly recommend, even if you're just hopping into the grocery store on your way home from a shoot, take your camera with you. Uh, don't leave your gear in a plastic bag or box, uh, unless you have a desiccant pack, preferably a rechargeable one, because if moisture gets into that bag or box, which it will, it can cause fungus to grow on the lenses or in the leather, in the viewfinder optics, all kinds of places in the camera. And don't let this camera get wet. It's not weather sealed and the electronics will definitely short if the camera gets wet. Just remember your camera is a precision tool. As long as you take care of your camera, your camera will take care of you. That is it for the first video on the AV-1. If this was helpful, please give me a thumbs up and that lets me know if I'm making content which is useful and beneficial to you. If you're an amateur photographer, by all means, please feel free to post a link to some of your photos taken with the AV-1 in the comments. The second video in the series is gonna talk about how to do all of the stuff with this camera. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the second video.